Ready in the studio? Three, two, one. Don't touch that remote. You're never going to hear this information anyplace else. What's really going on at the state capitol? Hello there, folks. My name is Tim Utes, ho host of CCCR Education. That's a tough one. Today I have with me my guest host, Sue Jeffers. Hello, Sue. How are you doing? Thrilled to be here, Tim. Are you ready to get started? So nice to be back. I'm going to put it right in your seat first. You go ahead and tell. get started. Well, let's remember, I think the last time you and I left everyone, you were a candidate. Uh, we were just getting ready for the election. We saw a great election in the sense that the Republicans took over the control of the Minnesota Senate and the Minnesota House. And a first for the Minnesota Senate in... 36 years or so yes. right here. Yes, which is a huge win. They heard it here first. Yep, you, you and, and me. Uh -huh. It's on tape. If people want to go back and look on YouTube, it's on tape. Mm -hmm. Nobody else called it no. except for you and I. <laughs> yep. So I'm, I'm quite proud of that. I didn't um, win, but hey, I came. Uh, we did a good job. Yes, and next, did a next good time job. we're going to win. Yes, I, I know you will. Yes. I know you will. And I know, um, I know we taught a lot of people about a lot of things that are happening over there. I know we helped a lot of other candidates win, Let's too. Talk, I'm going to talk about that, too, because you and I, I, you took off in this program because I started out with just me at first and you, and then you added other candidates, and you interviewed something like 60 candidates, and I heard that out of those 60, 10 actually got elected. I lost elected. count yeah. of how many we interviewed. That's the latest I heard. Great, so. great candidates, because far too often people don't realize who or what they're voting for, and I am so happy that that winning message of smaller government resonated. And the cool thing is that the Democrats weren't doing this, so us Republicans had an inside edge in 2010 on this on this d deal of uh, doing just cable wait. shows. We're going to get bigger and better. Bigger too. and better. Bigger yeah, we got we oh, got yeah. a lot of practice. So we were quite happy with the Minnesota and with the Republicans taking over the House and the Senate. Uh, great message that they had. Uh, not too happy with the governor's seat. I'm 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 wishing Mark Dayton the best of luck. But we've already seen his $37 billion budget yes. is way more money than the state of Minnesota has. It requires $4 billion in tax increases, which it won't fly. It, it won't make it. No. But we do have some hope in Mr. Uh, Governor Dayton because he did sign off some legislation that the Republicans pushed through last week that allows... Um, the bureaucracy to be reduced so businesses can open and expand in Minnesota. So there is some hope for the governor's the governor's seat that he is reasonable in some areas. I, I agree with you because he he signed off on the environmental permitting uh, re that, to reduce yeah. some of the red tape. That's the bill you were talking about, which made a lot of the Democrats angry. You yeah. know, they're very big on the environment and they believe the more regulation, the better. And even though it was detrimental to the state of Minnesota, uh, it was a bipartisan vote and Mark Dayton signed it into law. So, yes, I think you'll see Mark Dayton also sign maybe photo ID. I think you'll see him sign uh, a few other pieces of legislation that I think the voters and the citizens of Minnesota really, 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 really want. want. So there is there is some there is some. Collaborative and, work, and collaborative efforts there. Yes, I'll give Mark Dayton a little bit more credit, too, because once he realized that his proposed $37 billion budget came in and was so over... Overwhelmingly yes, rejected. rejected by, by what was 201 the, what was the to 1. one. one. Uh, Senator Tomasoni was the only one who voted for Mark Dayton's plan. In the plan. House or the Senate. And in fact, Mark Dayton sent a letter and said, don't vote for the plan. Not right. one member of the House of Representatives voted for it, right. not one. Uh, which is, I think is pretty interesting all in all. But when Mark Dayton got the new budget forecast, he realized, oh my gosh, well, the budget isn't $6.2 billion like we thought it was. Now it's only $5.02 only billion. But I do, but I, we do got to include. We, we'll address the deficit. In okay. a, in, we'll, we'll go into the whole deficit in a minute because that whole thing is deceiving. And Yes, and I, wanna, yes, I don't and want us to forget that because I'm, I want to bring up some right. issues in that. And, and we want the viewers to, to understand, understand that it's the not, budget. What so, you hear is not necessarily the right, whole truth. Right. And we know that we don't have $37 billion for Mark Dayton's budget. He proposed $4 billion in tax increases. Well, once the new forecast came in, he realized, 
oh my gosh, you know that surtax on the really rich people that we were going to go after? He goes, well, maybe we don't need that. So that shows Mark Dayton is a little bit flexible and he's willing to say, okay, I still want to have the, the fourth tier income tax. I still want to tax the crap out of all of you. Right. But, um, but yeah, I don't have to tax the extra out of the 3%. So And one thing too for me, I, I'm a Republican, proud of it. But I do also want to acknowledge Democrats when they do stand up and, they, and they're counted like they should be, yes. holding to the Constitution, holding to the rule of law. And I did during the campaign season last year when we would have our, our shows, there were times that Democrats didn't take per diem as an example, two Democrats out of the House, out of all 134 Demo or, uh, candidate or House members, two, are, and they were Democrats, and one of them lived in Rochester, so I do give them credit. So I want yes. to make sure people understand that I'm not this hard-nosed Republican that, that Republicans do no wrong and Democrats are always wrong. So I want to make sure people understand that in the process as we go through these education series. Our focus now, we've switched from campaigning now for the next year to really focus on educating. I want people out there to get engaged, know what's going on. We have a constitution represent a republic that will not function if the people aren't participatory in the process because it's the people's government. And if the people are AWOL, government's going to run amok. And we've seen that happen, and that's where we're at today. So we need to get back to educating people and understanding a lot of different things in government. And what I really want people to understand is our politicians, our elected officials, they work for us. Correct. They work for us. They don't belong up on a pedestal. They are there to represent the will of the people. They're there to... to, to when you swear in, you take an oath to, to the, the Constitution. Constitution. And we already have seen members of the House of Representatives and of the, of the Minnesota Senate that haven't followed by those rules. Correct. And one thing we people got to understand, the Constitution of Minnesota and the federal Constitution are directly the will of the people, the supreme rule of the people. We should not be arguing with our representatives about what fits within the confines of the Constitution, but we should be arguing uh, principles and issues within the Constitution, like education, for an example. It's in the state constitution that the state shall provide education. How that's defined is where we have our argument. But what, we've, what I have discovered in the last four years, being involved in the political process or as a candidate, is a lot of people in office... They, don't even, they say, yeah, I swear not the Constitution. They forget about it, throw it in a drawer and go on with their merry way and pass legislation and laws that are unrelated to being within the confines of the Constitution. We've got to get our representatives back to that Constitution and then argue the principles of what's in the Constitution as far as state funding and state, and state expenses. At one of the Senate hearings not too long ago, in, in January, we had a Hennepin County Commissioner, Mike Opat, when asked about the Constitution, said he couldn't answer any, con any questions about the Constitution because it was above his pay grade. He then went on to say the Constitution was, and I'm paraphrasing here, but this is the general gist of it, was irrelevant in Hennepin County. That is not the kind of elected officials we need to have anywhere, whether it's at state government, federal government, or even city and local governments. Correct. And just so people know, every public servant, police, fire, everybody swears an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution. They don't uphold their lobbying groups or their associations or the labor unions they belong to or the, even technically the people because the people have already dictated to the, to the layers of government what their expectation is in the Constitution. And real quickly, folks, this is a copy. There we go. Okay, this is a copy of the state constitution. When you print it out on your co computer, it's 20 pages. It's worth getting. It's free online. Type up Minnesota Constitution and actually sit down and read it because this is the supreme rule of law that the courts, the Congress, and the executive branch of government, both state and federal, are, are obligated to follow. This happens to be the Minnesota Constitution, but the mm -hmm. federal is a sim similar. Federal gave the guidelines to the state constitutions. I carry the federal constitution in my purse. I carry the state because I'm running for state office. Exactly. I, I'm concerned about state issues. <laughs> All right, let's, <laughs> so go, let's back go back to the to Minnesota the, budget. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk about the deficit, if you want to call it a deficit. Um, in the constitution, it requires a balanced budget for the state of Minnesota. Well, technically it's in statute. It's not actually in the Constitution. Very I good. want to clarify Thank that. You. It's in Thank state you. statute. Uh, some states do have it in their Constitution. We don't. I thought it did, and I looked through it, and it's actually in state statute. It requires a balanced budget. That being said, it's still the law of the land. We have, along with the reports that come out on our budget, is other segments of that budget, including unpaid and misused commitments to education that have been kicked down the road that have to be repaid, 